video on reflections. Uh, just before we start, just a reminder that there is a notes charter available for this video. So if you just check the description below for a download link, you can take the uh, worksheet and work along with me as we go through. Okay, so the first thing we need to just think about is what does a reflection actually mean? Well, most commonly reflections are what you would see in the mirror. So um, what we uh, have in this situation is uh, we have shapes being reflected um, in a mirror line or a line of reflection. And one thing to think about here is if you were holding a mirror at arm's length, then your reflection would be the same distance away in the reflection in the mirror as it is in real life. And so that is the key element to all of um, all of our drawings. We need to make sure that we keep the same distance from the original shape to the mirror line and to the um, uh, to the reflection as well. Okay, and so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a point and in this case it is two little squares away from the uh, line of reflection and so as I go through the line of reflection it will do the same again it will go two spaces across at the top if we count the squares going along that's one two three four five so we do the same again one two three four five and we mark a point Finally, if we go to the bottom uh, bottom left hand corner, one, two, three, four, five squares. So we do the same again, one, two, three, four, five. And now what we have are the three points on our new shape, which we just need to join together with straight lines, keeping it nice and neat. And there we go, we have our reflection. We're going to do exactly the same now with a mirror line which is horizontal. Just because it's um, horizontal doesn't change anything about our method. We still just want to count squares. So from each of the corners of the shape, how far are we from the uh, line of reflection? Well, in this case, one square. So we're going to draw a point one square down. Same with this corner, one square, one square. If we go to the top of the shape, that is one two, three, four squares away. So we'll count the same again. One, two, three, four, and mark. If we go to this point, if I come from uh, this corner, one, two, three, so I'll do the same in the mirror line. One, two, three. And if we go to this corner, that is one, two, three. So I'll repeat it. One, two, three, there we go. And the last corner that we've got is at the top right hand side. So one, two, three, four. Do the same again. One, two, three, four. And now all I need to do is all of those corners, join them up with straight lines and we'll have a reflection. There we go. Next, we're going to look at diagonal lines. Now, one thing you can do um, if you are doing this on paper, um, if you do see a diagonal line for a reflection, you can just turn your page around so that the um, diagonal line of reflection is actually going straight up and down. It's a way of just being able to check um, you're doing exactly what you need to, because at all times we need to make sure that we're staying at right angles um, to, this, uh, to this mirror line. But for this one, I'm going to show you another little method that you can use, which is just drawing in some lines. Okay, so all I'm going to do is make sure I stick to a right angle to the mirror line. There you'll notice the mirror line and the line that I've drawn in is a right angle. And that is going directly through two squares. And so I'll repeat that process, going exactly two squares um, through the shape. And that is telling me that I'm going to have a point right here. If I do the same again with this corner, well, if I keep it to a right angle, it's actually only half a square. It's going to come straight back out at this point. So half a square either side of the mirror line and then draw in our point. Do the same again for this corner. That is one square away from the mirror line. So we'll repeat that and we'll take it through the same distance. And finally, the last square if we keep it at a right angle, that is two and a half squares we've gone through. So we'll do the same, half, one and a half, two and a half. And there we go. Those are the four corners of our new shape. Now, 
all that means is we just want to now draw in our reflection and there it is and you'll notice that when we uh, reflect in a diagonal line the shape actually looks like it's turned around a little bit now it hasn't we must make sure that we're not uh, confusing this with a rotation of rotating the shape it has been reflected it's just that the shape um, is not in the same orientation as it started we'll do the same with the red triangle and all I want to do is once again keep to a right angle with the mirror line and there we go through two squares so I'll repeat the process through two squares there is a point we'll mark that then the same for this bottom corner that is one square so I'll repeat it one square there's another point and this final one that goes through two three squares so then I'll go one two three in the reflection as well mark the point and we've got our reflection join them up to each other and there we go again you'll notice it does look like it's been rotated but it hasn't it is a reflection it's just that the shape is not in the same orientation as it began okay so then in our next examples we're actually asked to um, reflect the shape in the line y equals 5 and in the line x equals negative 1 so in this case our mirror lines haven't been drawn on for us we need to plot them ourselves so at this point you should be familiar with how to draw the line y equals 5 and how to draw the line x equals a negative 1 the key thing here is that the line y equals 5 it goes through the y-axis at 5 so we draw that in as a straight line and so if I'm going to reflect shape A in this line you'll now notice that again we've got the same situation all we're going to do is count how far we are away from the mirror line so that is for this corner one space for this corner one space for this one we are actually four squares so we'll do the same again once we go through the mirror line one two three four and for this point here one two three four again one two three four and what we've now got are four points which we can join together to make our reflection and so that will be the reflection of shape a now if we were to look at x equals negative one well the whole point of x equals negative one is that it goes through the x-axis at negative one and so we draw that line in and once again all I'm going to do is take from the shape that we've started with and we're going to count to the mirror line now one thing to be careful of here something that a few people uh, make a mistake with they often just start using the axes as their mirror lines it's very important that we're only counting to this blue line because that is the line we've been asked to use as our line of reflection so that is one two three spaces for the first point so one two three takes me to there at the top one two three four five six seven so do the same again one two three four five six seven and at the bottom one two three four five six seven so again one two three four five six seven there it is so now we just need to draw in the lines which join the points together and there is our reflection okay so then next uh, we are asked to reflect the shape a in the line y equals x and shape b in the line y equals negative x uh, now these are a little bit more tricky but um, basically as long as we can remember what the two lines look like they should be pretty straightforward um, so the first thing that we need to look at is the line y equals x now that means that in every coordinate um, the y value is the same as the x value so that would be places like negative 10 negative 10 0 0 and 10 10 that will be the line y equals x it is a perfectly straight line going diagonally um, through the corners of every single square and so what you'll notice is this is just the situation we had previously 
um, with the diagonal line. So again, if you want to, you could turn your page around so that the, um, the mirror line is facing directly straight up and down. But otherwise, just think about making sure you remain on a right angle to the mirror line in order to make sure that um, all of your points are in the correct positions. So if we start in the bottom corner, we're gonna go one and a half squares. So one and a half squares in the reflection. It goes half a square, so half a square in the reflection as well. One, two squares, so two squares in the reflection. And finally, the last point goes one, two, three, four squares. So one, two, three, four in the reflection as well. And then all we need to do is join those together to make our reflection. So there is the first points joined together and we have our reflection. For shape B, um, we've got now y equals negative x. Now all that means is that the x value must be the negative version of the y value. And so if we start with negative 10, then that would be positive 10. If we start with zero, well, we'd actually go to zero again. And if we went to 10, we'd want negative 10. And so we have a straight line this time, but it goes diagonally downwards. And again, same, uh, same process. We just want to think how far away are we from the line? And so the first square we've got is one and a half. So one and a half, we are one, two, three and a half, one, half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. And the last point, we are one, two, three and a half. So half, one, two, three. There we go, we've got all of our points. So then all we need to do, join them together to find our reflection. And there's the reflection for B. And for our last examples, um, we're going to be asked to describe the transformation. Now, the transformation is the overall name for all of the different types of transformation you might see. So reflections, rotations, enlargements, translations. And so we're not told which one particular, uh, specifically it is. We need to, first of all, decide. And for this one, the way for us to decide that uh, this is a reflection is that we can see that the shape has flipped. It's uh, flipped from being pointing upwards to pointing downwards. But these two points are still in the same position as each other. Um, so there is definitely a reflection. So the first thing that we do need to say is that it's a reflection. The second thing is, if we're going to describe it fully, well, that means we also need to know where the line of reflection is. And so what we need to do here to decide how far apart uh, or where that line of reflection is, is just think how far apart are the different points on the shape. So if I look here, there is a distance of six squares between them. And between these two points, six squares. And so the line of reflection must be halfway between them so that we could keep the same, uh, same distance between each one. And so the middle point would be here. And now I'm just going to extend that line as far as I can because now that is going to let me actually name the line of reflection. The key point here is the line of reflection, it goes through the y-axis at three. And so this must have used the line y equals three. And the first thing that we've actually said about this was it was a reflection. And so we need to write that. reflection in y equals three. Now that is a full, a full description of the transformation there for this question. In the second part of this one, um, it's describing fully the single transformation again. So mapping shape A onto shape B. So to get from A to B, um, we need to think how we could do that. Now here, you may look at this and say, well, this shape is turned around, so it's a rotation. Um, but actually, again, there's a little clue with this one that we might be able to do it slightly differently um, in that we can keep an even 
spacing between each of them. If we join together the same corner on each one, well, if I look at each of these uh, corners placed together, this one has a distance of four squares diagonally. Now, if I go halfway in between that, that would be two squares. This one uh, goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I go halfway on that one, well, that will be a four squares. And going along here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I went four and a half, it will be here. And what you might notice about these three points is that uh, they actually lie on a perfect straight line. They are using this line here. And if we think back to what we've just looked at, this is the line y equals x. So we have a reflection in y equals x. Okay, so the very last part of our um, our video today is the exam question. It came from Edexcel June 2017 and it was on the foundation paper too. Um, and we've been given two shapes, B and C, and being asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle B onto triangle C. And so the first thing again here, this is a description. So we first of all, we need to decide which type of transformation we're actually dealing with. And in this case, because the shape has flipped over, well, that flip tells me that it must be a reflection. There's the starting point, it must be a reflection. And then if I'm going to fully describe it, for a reflection, I need to name a line of reflection. So again, it's all here dealing with between the points which are the same, where is the center? If it's a reflection, we should be in the middle. Well, in this case, that would mean we are actually looking straight down the middle. Now we've got a couple of options. We can name this line in a couple of ways. The easiest way is just to call it by its name. That blue line is the Y axis. And that is absolutely fine as a answer. But it is also uh, a different name sometimes if we're talking about y equals or x equals, well, in this case, this line goes through the x-axis at zero. So you could call it x equals zero. And so that is a reflection in y-axis or x equals zero.